Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, is all about different types of fainting. All right, welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing. We're talking about fainting today, and it's been a big topic because it's so important, especially when talking about small gloves and MMA. And one of the videos I have posted in the past was about fainting, but I wanna get into the details and the different types of fainting in this video. So, fainting, why do we faint? That's the first thing we need to talk about, right? So, what is a faint, right? So, a faint is getting a reaction, right? And you'll hear the word faint and fake a lot of times, and some people might even use them interchangeably, right? So you are fainting, faking to get a reaction from your opponent. So what types of reactions are you looking for? So first thing I'm looking for is what type of counter tendencies they are going to throw. So if I'm in a fight or I'm sparring and I throw a feint and I see my opponent load up their rear hand, I realize that maybe they're trying to counter my jab with their overhand right, so I have to start thinking, or if I faint and then I see them evade a little bit, I'm like, okay, maybe they don't wanna engage right now, so maybe I can faint and come forward, right? So I'm basically gaining information with my feints, right? I'm assessing, I'm evaluating to see what they are going to do. I can see if they're attack hungry, right? By them showing that, or they're evading. Now, the other thing you'll notice is what type of defensive response am I getting, right? So when I faint, boom, do the hands come up and they shell up and hide in their shell, right? That's the ideal, you know, faint that I want, right? So if I faint and someone lifts their hands like that, I can grab them in a clinch, I can maybe rip the body off of that. It gave me enough information to know that they're protecting their head, they don't wanna get hit, so now I can create angles, I can move, I can, I'm able to attack and evade successfully without getting hurt, you know? That's all the information and who, who faints the best? Boxers, right? With the sweet science of boxing, you only have two weapons, so you having to faint is that much more important. Watch a boxing fight. Before any time any boxer throws, there is some sort of faint, you know? You see jabs, you know? You, you get the reaction. So a boxer, because it's so, you know, above the waist, two weapons, it's, you have to be a little bit more creative and fainting is that much more important. But I just mentioned in the beginning of the video, small glove and MMA is important because of the small glove and you can't just go in there and get hit. You have to be a little bit more strategic and you have to set up your strikes, right? And by me knowing the tendency, it lets me evade and the risk of getting hit with a four ounce glove and getting knocked out, right? is less by using the fainting. Okay, got that out of the way. What, what is a faint? How to use a faint? When to do blah, 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 blah. That's done. Now, types of faint is very important. So now I like to break down fainting into two parts, upper body and lower half fainting, okay? Upper and lower body fainting. So what is an upper body faint? An upper body faint has to do with your punching, right? And you can faint with a lead side and rear side by sh pretending, by showing a punch. So the first feint that I like to use is a lead side feint. Because I like to use my jab a lot, right? And I set things up, most likely my low kick off of my jab, or jab rear hand, jab, jab, low kick. So because I use my jab a lot as a range finder to set things up, the lead side feint is natural for most people. So if I pump a jab, then all of a sudden, I showed the jab with my shoulder, right? That is an upper body feint, a punch feint, a jab feint, if you wanna say, it, okay? So I can jab, feint, jab again. So by using the half feint with my shoulder, my opponent doesn't know when the punch is coming, when to block, when not to block, so you're creating rhythm and tempo by using that jab. So here, boom, feint, bang, boom, feint, right? And I can create. So the beautiful things about fainting, right, is it loads up the other side, right? So boom, I can load here, faint here, bang, my, lo my rear side's loaded. So if I faint here, this side opens up, so bang, I could attack, right? So if I jab, cross, then all of a sudden I throw a jab, you know, boom, faint a second jab, I'm already loaded here to be able to attack. Okay, now the second feint is the rear side feint, right? So now if I'm here, boom, and I fake a right hand, what happens now, my lead side shoulder's loaded, now I could rip off a shot off of that side. So again, throwing it, right? Now I'll send, boom, bring the shoulder here, load it up, now I got a power hook. 
or faint here, come back with a nice hard stiff jab, right? So here, stiff jab gives me the ability to move my hips safely to load up my punches, okay? So using the shoulders to load up the punch or to create that distraction is just gonna help you land, okay? But in order to make my shoulders look more believable, my head also has to go in my feet, right? So fainting in an upper body faint, right? Whether it's the lead side or the rear side, okay? You have to make it believable. So by making it believable, I have to get my head involved. If I'm just here with my shoulders, no, I have to move my head, right? To make the punch look believable. So by throwing this or going, like this, it's more believable because I'm dipping my head, you know, showing punch, showing the ability to move and hit is what gets a better reaction. And a lot of times you do have to throw the punch in order for the feint to work. If I just start a fight and I throw rear shoulder feint, right? If I never threw it before, my opponent's just gonna move. They don't know what's happening, right? But if I throw and intentionally throw that right hand because I want them to block it, block it, be scared of it. I might throw it even heavier to get them to sit and then I faint and then I get the reaction, right? So making it believable by using your head, your shoulders and your feet are all gonna make the punch faint look better. And remember, get the reaction, load up the other punch, right? So boom, all of a sudden, bang, bang, bang. I could follow up with power because the faint put me in a good position. Now, a lot of times I use the rear shoulder faint to close distance, right? If I wanna close distance with here, I might step in with my back foot. As my rear shoulder comes up, my back foot comes in, now I can close distance safely. So a faint not only gets you in safely, lets you close distance, right? Safely, because now I know what I'm doing and I use that faint to get in and close distance. Okay, so that's upper body fainting. Now, lower, bon lower body fainting actually works really well for the bazooka curriculum because we like to attack the legs. We got kick fighting systems involved in our curriculum. So what you wanna do now is use the low kick feints to be able to set things up. So a lower body faint comes from your feet, but more importantly, your hips and your knees, okay? So what does that mean? If I throw a low kick, right? Usually it's my hip turning round, right? It's a round motion technique. So what do I do? I throw the round kick once. Now all of a sudden, boom, I throw my hip, which loads up my shoulders to be able to punch. So now I'm using a right round kick feint, right? Using my hip in a round motion, right? To feint the kick. So even a lot of times I might throw the kick, I might even, boom, step up to be able to punch again. Or if I'm having some of my more advanced followers, boom, I might throw my knee up, not kick, but still get a reaction from my opponent that's blocking, right? So I throw here once, they block it, right? Then all of a sudden, boom, I come up, they think the blocks come in and I come and I attack around the other side, right? One of the more popular ones you'll see here into a left head kick, right? You switch stances and then you get the big power kick, the power punch from the opposite side. But it was all created from a rear round kick feint, okay? So on any of the round kicks, you can create a feint, right? So the one we saw recently was when Sean O'Malley used the rear round kick feint and then he came around. Or he faked the back kick and then came in with the rear hand, right? So feint, boom. So your lower body feinting to set up punches or kicks, okay? So round kick feints using your hip, very important, okay? So whether it's lead side, rear side, feint, boom, you know? Feint, boom, boom, so using your hips. Now, another thing you can do is feint with a front kick or knees, right? Because the motion is different, right? If I throw a round kick, my motion is more here. But if I throw front kicks, right, it's a little different reaction. So front kick and then all of a sudden knee up, knee up, right? You create a distraction and your opponent doesn't know are you front kicking, are you kneeing, or are you stepping forward? Now, I call this knee up stepping and it's also created in fainting because you set them up, boom, front kick, or you throw a knee. Then all of a sudden your opponent moves, you can walk forward with these knees. Not only does it block low kicks coming in, right? You can't attack me with low kicks, but you also don't know if I'm gonna crack you with a front kick or my knees are coming. So you end up 
staying shelled up here because you don't know what you're gonna do. So as soon as I front kick you, you give me this reaction, I think, boom, I knee you to the face. I knee through the guard. I got you shelled. And at that point, I can knee you all day, front kick you. You're in a compromised position because you're shelled up, okay? So front kicks and knee up feints are very important in closing distance. Okay, so let me recap, recap this for you. A lot of information here. So what makes a successful feint, okay? Before we even get into the types of feint that this video was about, what is a successful feint? And that is being believable. If your strike isn't believable, the feint isn't gonna work. So you make it believable by one, throwing that strike. You have to throw that strike with the intention of getting them to block. Once they block, then you could be able to create a feint. The reaction is more believable, okay? And what makes it believable is you have to show it looking like a strike. So your head has to be involved. Your shoulders have to be involved. Your hips and your footwork have to show. If I'm, if I'm not moving my feet, I need to show with my footwork that I'm gonna attack with my shoulders. Gotta be believable. Even your facial expression has to go. If I'm here, no, you can make the face, you know? Like you're gonna throw it, you know? Everything has to show to make it believable. Even your face, the eyes, the nose, you know, that, that scowl on your face. Make it look like you're gonna throw it, okay? Show that aggression, all right? Now, the types of feints. Remember, you can punch feint, you can use your hips, you can use your knees. The different types of feints. Feints are created from strikes. Fainting the rear hand, feint the jab, feint the round kick, feint the knee, all different things, okay? so. You gotta make it believable by adding these different types of feints. Now, the last point I'm gonna make, right? I talked about fainting, but you could also faint the strike and angles, right? So why I talk about this is because MMA fighters should do it the best. If I'm a striker in MMA and I don't wanna be taken down, right? Fainting the strike, right? I might faint throwing an uppercut, right? Because I don't want the wrestler to come in, so I'm fainting throwing this technique, and then maybe I can throw a kick to the head or the distractions here, boom, and I crack with my lead hand, right? So I'm creating feints, distractions with angles, punch, and different types. So the long story short, Fainting is simple, but it's also advanced. It can be used in so many different ways when it comes to fighting. All right, hope you enjoyed today's video. Lots of information. Continue to support the channel by heading over to HayabusaFight.com to check out their protective gear as I use all of their gear myself personally. Perfect sports nutrition to get your supplements using code Bazooka20 to get 20% off your order. Bazooka Shop, make sure you can get all your gear to support the channel at bazookashop.com. And finally, bazookatraining.com for only $9.99 US a month, you get access to all bazooka curriculum and training. We have home workouts, tutorials, bag workouts, and we just added sparring drills, right? That you can practice with your team to help you in your fights and training. All right, hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'll see you next time here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Over one year in lockdown, an empty gym, a divided community, many questions unanswered. They're doing the best they can, uh, trying to save their business. But on one man's 36th birthday, he decided Thanks. to fight back. <laughs> Subscribe now for only 9.99 USD a month bazooka training.com